Yeah, welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Business Incorporated. We're coming to you from Channels Television. Let's take you to the domestic fixed income market. Sheung Ameye is a fixed income dealer with Citibank Nigeria and joins us from Lagos. Hello, Sheung. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I would like you to talk to us about today's trading activities. Well, we've seen uh, uptick in yields on bond. Um, I think uh, traders have the next uh, MPC in mind, and also uh, given that we saw a particularly weak uh, auction um, uh, at, the, at, the, at the primary auction yesterday, mm. um, um, the DMO sold uh, way less than they offered. Um, there was demand wasn't that much. So really, um, I think there's a kind of uh, de-risking going on in the market. So yields are up about uh, 30 bits. Uh, on, on, on bonds. Uh, TB is also, uh, we saw some uh, pressure there because of the liquidity situation in the market. Um, um, yeah. So uh, we saw uh, yields go up basically about 10 to 20 bits on TB. So really, it's, uh, it's a market with a lot of pressure at the moment. Let's talk about this auction a little bit. So 95 billion naira was an offer, while 39 billion naira was sold. Why did we have this? Huge gap. Yes, uh, um, um, I think uh, 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 investors who are demanding a higher yield uh, based on uh, based on the situation on the ground. Remember, we had uh, we have to do that are yielding. Uh, 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 we have to do that are yielding uh, about uh, 22 percent on. Uh, on, on, on average, on long end, so really, uh, level of 15 to 16 wasn't so attractive uh, uh, for investors. I think that's what happened. I think uh, they they they're demanding higher yields at the moment. All right, thank you so much, Sheung Ameya, for your insights. There, Sheung Ameya is a fixed income dealer with Citibank Nigeria. Egypt's central bank has kept its key interest rate unchanged in a meeting of its monetary policy committee two weeks after it surprised the market with a 3% hike in its key rates. The bank kept its overnight deposit rate at 14.75% and its overnight lending rate at 15.75%. The bank had already raised rates by a cumulative 550 basis points this year. Egypt had been struggling to revive its economy since a popular uprising in 2011, uh, which drove away tourists and foreign investors, both major sources of hard currency. On November 3, the bank ditched its peg of 8.8 per, uh, per dollar and hiked rates by 300 basis points to stabilize the newly floated pound. Last week, Egypt secured a $12 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund but must push through with painful economic reforms, which include imposing a value-added tax cutting electricity subsidies and raising fuel prices. Let's take you to India. Millions of small farmers in the country are struggling to buy seeds and fertilizers to sow key summer crops owing to a cash crunch caused by the government's radical move to remove 500 and 1,000 rupee notes from circulation. India's decision to abolish high-denomination banknotes could hardly have come at a worst time for the 263 million farmers like Shatabi and Bahadur Singh who cannot get enough cash to buy the seeds and fertilizers they need for their winter crops. Lower farm output in the planting season that began in October threatens to drag down India's farm and overall economic growth, hurting rural communities only just recovering after two years of drought. Earlier this month, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that 500 and 1,000 rupee banknotes will be withdrawn from circulation to crack down on corruption and counterfeit currency. Since the banned rupee notes made up more than 80% of the currency in circulation, the move left millions without cash and threatens to bring much of the cash-driven economy to a halt. While city dwellers are still queuing up to exchange or deposit old money at the bank and to withdraw new funds, many villages live miles from the nearest branch and have yet to see the new notes being rushed into circulation. Farmers who have already spent money on plowing and irrigation to keep the soil moist can ill afford to leave their land fallow. Late sowing typically reduces yields 
and increases the risk that inclement spring weather could damage crops. How will a crop grow? Even if we manage to have a crop, the harvest will be less, said Shatabi, a land-owning farmer from the village of Kalbadi in the northern Indian state of Haryana, some 70 kilometers from New Delhi. A drop in wheat output will boost local prices that are already near record highs. Stocks are at their lowest level for nearly a decade, and even before the latest cash crunch, private traders were expected to import around 3 million tons this year. To stave off mounting criticism, the government allowed farmers to withdraw up to 25,000 rupees a week against their crop loans. After selling their rice crop last month, many are stuck with all 500 and 1,000 bills they can no longer spend. They are only allowed to exchange 2,000 rupees into new money, and the rest must be deposited before the notes cease to be accepted by banks after December 30. And South Africa's Deputy Finance Minister, CBC Jonas, said that uh, patronage and corruption were undermining efforts for a credible government a day after an audit showed that the government had made $3 billion in irregular expenditure this year alone. South Africa's political elite has been involved in a slew of corruption scandals which have eroded the trust of investors and weighed on Africa's most industrialized economy. Ratings agencies have warned of downgrades before the end of the year. Mr. Jonas remarks in a speech at a Labour Congress uh, comes a day after the Auditor General said irregular expenditure by government departments swelled 80% to 43.4 billion rand. That's $3 billion in the 2015 and 2016 financial year. And Barcelona has struck a short sponsorship deal worth 47 million pounds, that's 58 million dollars a year, with the Japanese online firm Rakuten. It is one of the biggest football shirt sponsorships yet seen and could make Barcelona wealthier than Real Madrid, currently the world's richest club. The deal, which began with the 2017 to 2018 season, and lasts for four years. We'll earn the club at least 188 million pounds in that time with more to come if the team wins the Spanish Championship or the Champions League. The Barcelona president, Joseph Maria Batomo, said the agreement puts the club at the forefront of sports club sponsorships, which has always been an objective for the current board of directors. He added that negotiations began in 2015 at Adina in San Francisco, organized by defender Gerard Piquet, who is a friend of Hiroshi Mikitani, the chairman and chief executive of Rakuten. And that brings us to the end of today's edition of Business Incorporated. Thank you so much for being a part of it and do enjoy your weekend. I am Bolaji Akimwali. <laughs>